Hello, my name is Dr James Gill and you join us here in the clinical skills labs of one of the local hospitals. And again, Covid's well, done a number on a lot of the education that we've been able to do. So today we're going to try and do a video looking at venipuncture, taking blood from a patient's vein. Now, obviously, Abby and uh, my usual uh, helpers uh, didn't really want to put their limbs forward for this. So that's why we're here with one of the artificial arms. Now, these things are a very good training uh, scenario for the students because well, they allow us to get it wrong without actually hurting the patient. Um, but it does make the scenario of going through and taking the blood ever so slightly bizarre when you're talking to what amounts to a severed arm. So these are set up with some artificial blood with a gravity draw so that when we uh, take the blood we should hopefully get all the appropriate stimuli from the arm. And what I mean by that is we're going to get uh, the flashback into the needle showing us we're in the right location and then allowing us to use the vacutainer. So with that introduction to the severed arm let's start off and show you what else we need. So before we actually go and start doing the whole stabby stabby thing with the patient, we need to make sure that we've got our kit ready. So we want to know which uh, blood bottles we're going to be taking and crucially make sure we know the order of the bottles. This is quite important because of the, uh, the nature of the chemicals in the bottles and to make sure that we've got the highest priority bloods um, sorted in case there's a problem with the vein. We also want to prepare the equipment to let us take the um, blood. And different hospitals will have different sets and different ways of doing it. So given that, there may be slight variations between what you're used to and what you've seen, but we've got a good selection of things here. With regard to anything, however, when it comes to providing or performing an invasive procedure on the patient, the number one thing is to check the expiry date of any of the kits that you're using. So here you can see that uh, this uh, taking set will expire in October 2022, so that will be fine to use for a patient. So select the items that you want and prepare them, taking them out of the bags and have them all set for yourself when you're going in to the room. Now, some uh, situations you will find that there is a vacutainer um, receiver with a needle that you'll apply which has the nice safety cap on the top. Personally I'm a big fan of these because it allows you to be very fast in terms of taking the blood and safe crucially. However we also have other um, sets where we've got a smaller gauge needle. Um, this allows more flexibility if you're trying to get into very small veins you can be a lot more dexterous with uh, a set like this. We can also be opportunistic where we have much larger um, vacutainer sets where we will be able to take a blood uh, culture bottle as well as our regular vacutainers on here. And here we've got a green, one of the larger um, uh, gauge needles, but we've still got that extra flexibility uh, with the connector here. Now once you've collected um, all of the kit and made sure it's in date, you're practically prepared for your venous section. Now, it's very important to make sure you're prepared so that you've got everything that you need for the patient. However, I would argue that the most important part of your venous section kit isn't here. That's actually the sharps bin. Now, it seems a daft thing to say that this is perhaps the most important part, but the pain and the anguish of a, a, a needle stick or a sharps injury is real. Never um, approach a patient with the intention to do venous action, to do cannulation, without your sharps bin. It protects yourself and your colleagues. It may be tempting to rely on the plastic sheaths that are present on some vacutainer kits. However, I would not um, rely on that on its own and also simply doing so I think is a very easy way to start cutting corners. So never approach a patient to take blood without your sharps bin. Right, with that in mind we've got our kit set, let's go and get some blood shall we? 
Once we have our venesection kit complete and prepared, we need to prepare ourselves. So we're going to gel our hands, and as we do that, we're going to confirm that we know the patient that we're going to see, and we know what blood we're going to be drawing. We're then going to be putting on our um, uh, aprons, because, well, we don't want blood to get anywhere. Crucial tip, make sure you put your apron on before you apply your gloves. It's much harder to apply the apron when you've got gloves on. With that finished, we apply our non-sterile gloves. As somebody who is right-handed, I want to make sure that I'm placing my equipment on the right side of the patient. That way I'm not having to cross my arms over when I'm actually doing the procedure. So, approaching the patient, we need to um, introduce ourselves and confirm the patient's name and date of birth and make sure that they're happy for us to do blood today. Um, ideally, if possible, we want to go with their non-dominant hand in case there are any problems or any discomfort afterwards. And we're going to start off with the tourniquet. So to begin, we're going to apply the tourniquet to the patient's arm, going up and round. A simple loop rather than a knot is going to be much more effective so that you can easily release it with one hand. We're going to leave it on for a couple of moments until the veins become apparent. If we're having any difficulty with that, we can get the patient to pump their hand, which should make the veins become more prominent. Now, it's less important the veins that we can see compared to the veins that we can palpate. And here we can find a nice vein in the antecubital fossa, so the brachiocephalic vein. So we're going to take our alcohol wipe, and we're going to start in a central motion from the area where we're intending to take the blood moving outwards. Note that we've done this after we've palpated the vein, so we know we're going, where we're going to go. So we're going to take the needle, unscrew the end, and then we can apply the vacutainer and remove to give us our um, needle. We're going to pull down below the vein, anchoring the vein, and we're going to approach with the bevel of the needle facing upwards. We're going to go in at about 20 degrees, holding with our non-dominant hand and st uh, stabilizing ourselves against the body. And then we're going to take the first vacuette and apply. We're going to keep going with our blood bottles, coming in from the left and taking the blood as required. Again, being very careful, remove with a simple twist and pull, meaning that the vessel uh, is unlikely to be damaged by our needle, and take any other blood that we need. Once we're finished with the blood draw, we're going to remove the tourniquet. Bear in mind we've only uh, tied it, but not with a knot, so that should come unloose easily. Then we're going to take some gauze, and I'm going to apply that directly over the wound as we remove the needle. Discard, and the needle will go into the sharp spin. We're going to get the patient to continue holding on uh, pressure over the wound as that will reduce the likelihood of leakage under the skin, causing a bruise which will cause discomfort and pain to the patient. We'll then apply some sticking tape to the patient and go and get our bloods processed. So just to recap, when doing uh, venipuncture, make sure you've prepared your kit and you know which patient it is you're going to be taking blood from. Ensure that you've got the correct bottles and you are aware of the draw order. So we're going to start off with the blue bottle, going to the gold bottle, going to the lavender, and then the grey bottle for the vast majority of uh, normal uh, blood tests required. If we did need to use blood culture bottles, they should be taken first before any other blood is. Once we're aware of the tests that we need and the bottles we've got, we've prepared our uh, venipuncture kit, deciding which of the various needle options we're going to choose, and then we go and see the patient. We're going to put the tourniquet on the arm whilst we prepare some of our equipment by the side of the bed, and that will allow the, um, the blood vessels to become apparent. 
It's crucially important that we don't leave the tourniquet on for excess periods of time, certainly hopefully no longer than a minute, because this can affect some of the uh, blood results, particularly from a biochemistry standpoint. Once we've palpated and confirmed that we're happy with the vein that we've, uh, we intend to use, we're going to alcohol wipe around the vein, starting from the center, moving outwards. Bringing our needle and vacutainers toward the patient, we're going to anchor the uh, blood vessel down before going in with the beveled edge facing upwards at approximately 20 degrees. We'll take the blood and um, remove the tourniquet crucially before uh, removing the needle. By removing the tourniquet, it means that we've got less pressure in um, the vessel and we're less likely to get bleeding, but more importantly, bruising, which is going to be the main source of discomfort after having blood taken. Immediately after removing the needle, uh, continue to apply pressure to the patient's arm and place your needle in the sharps container, probably one of the most crucial safety steps there. From then, you can apply a simple plaster to uh, the wound on the patient's arm and ask them to continue holding pressure on it. That's probably one of the most useful bits for the patient. The longer they apply pressure, the less likely there is to have leakage of blood from the blood vessel under the skin, which is going to cause bruising and pain. So this completes this overview on vein section or how to take blood. If you think it's been useful, please give the video a like and put us any comments down below as to what other clinical um, procedures you'd like us to film. And if you think that this whole thing has been useful to yourself, please consider subscribing. With that, we'll say cheerio. See you in the next one. Take care.